Good afternoon. Uh, we would like to welcome you to the 2021 Municipal Election Candidate Information Session. As you prepare to do your homework and get ready for the upcoming election, I hope you find this session to be helpful. I encourage you to ask questions and initiate discussion to help gain a better understanding of the role of the elected official, campaign, and the election process. Today's PowerPoint has been distributed to those in attendance, and it will also be posted on the city's website. Additionally, as you know, uh, this session is being recorded and it will be available for viewing later on on YouTube. Um, we do have a mixed group uh, today for the presentation. We have some who are uh, have council experience, some who have no council experience, and some who may be here just to get some more information. Um, I would like to do some introductions of the city representatives in attendance. My name is Brenda Moulter and I am the Director of Legislative Services. I'm also the returning officer for the upcoming election. Andrew, Andrew Kaiser, as you can tell, is the technical one in the team. He will be sharing his screen for the presentation. And he'll be also providing you a bit of insight later on on uh, WebEx for those who may not be familiar with it. Andrew is a senior legislative officer for the city. And he and I have been working closely together on preparations for the upcoming municipal election. In my absence, Andrew would assume the, the responsibilities of the returning officer. If you have some questions regarding this presentation or the election after this session, please feel free. You can email elections at fortsask.ca or you can contact either Andrew or I directly. I would also like to introduce our city manager, Troy Fleming, who is somewhere in the background here and uh, he will be hanging around should there be any questions of an operational nature that uh, I'm unable to answer. I'm always in the background hanging around. <laughs> you just need to know that. He is always around. That's right. Um, I think it would also be really helpful for the group to do um, introductions. And just because everybody, you might not know each other. And uh, I think it would just help with the dialogue from the group. So, um, Andrew, are you able to see the, the an order that we can have people do introductions? Yeah, you bet. I'll go down the list of participants here and we'll have everyone do a brief introduction if they're comfortable. So the first user I have on my list is Brian. Brian, if you're there, please share your video and microphone and do a brief introduction. And if not, we're going to move on to the next one. I have Deanna Lennox as the next participant. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Deanna Lennox, I'm currently sitting on council. Um, put my name forward to run for mayor in this year's election. Uh, and just want to take the opportunity to uh, wish everybody good luck. And um, I hope you uh, enjoy the process. Thank you very much. Okay, the next user I have here listed is Fort Sight and Sound. If you'd uh, care to share your name and uh, brief introduction. Hello, I'm Dennis Thompson. Um, I am actually put my name on for the counselor already. And yeah, thank you very much for having this information center because I'm learning lots so far and good luck to everybody. I'm, it's quite the process already. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Dennis. Okay, and then I have Gail Catcher. Thank you. I'm Gail Catcher, current mayor of the city of Fort Saskatchewan. This is my third term, plus one term as city council. And I'll just say, you know what, uh, for anyone who does get elected, it's the most rewarding experience that you'll have. And you will find that it gets into your blood and it's something that you will want to do for a long time especially if you're passionate about your community. So uh, good luck to everybody and um, look forward to seeing you out campaigning. Thank you very much. Uh, the next person I have here is Jibs Abitoye. Hello everyone, my name is Jibs Abitoye. I'm um, one of the city councillors um, right here in the city and I haven't put my name forward yet, um, but 
I think it's um it's important for me to like be a part of this session because I know there's lots that haven't changed since the last election. So I'll just like to um keep myself updated. Um and I I mean I, I really look forward to um what, what's gonna come out of this session. And thank you everyone. Thank you. Okay, I see I'm uh, gonna skip back to the top of the list. Brian, do you care to introduce yourself before I miss you? Yes, thank you, Andrew. Had a bit of a stumble getting my um, video and audio going when you called my name the first time. Yes, certainly, Brian Kelly, Councillor of the City of Fort Saskatchewan. Like Jibs, I have not yet officially registered to run. Um, looking forward to this session, Andrew, and um, we'll see you in a, the next council meeting, if not sooner, I guess. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much. Okay, uh, next, Marie. Hello, I'm Marie Reed, and uh, I thought I would throw my hat into the ring. Uh, possibly, I was going to get some information. Um, I've been an educator with Elk Island Public Schools for over 25 years, currently substitute teaching, and I just needed um, something a bit more of a challenge. And uh, I have a real interest in the community. I've lived here all of my life, except for two years, and I would really love to have some input in. Uh, um, shaping and growing the community. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Noya. There we go. Unmuted. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, thanks for organizing this information session, Andrew and Brenda. Um, yep, longtime resident of Port Saskatchewan, local business owner as well. Good afternoon, uh, the current council members and, and Mayor Catcher as well. Uh, yeah, I filed my nomination papers, uh, I believe mid to late March, and this will be the first time I am running for public office. Thank you very much. Um, Stuart McGowan. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you. It's uh, not my first kick at the can, but uh, I've uh, been in Fort Saskatchewan for uh, a little over 20 years now. Uh, very passionate about the uh, uh, the area, uh, a huge support of uh, arts and culture, and I'm looking very much forward to this information session. Um, being a, uh, a safety trainer over the years, uh, all information is good information, and uh, all knowledge is, is uh, useful. So thank you very much. Welcome everyone and uh, uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next on the list, I have Mr. Troy Fleming again. He needs no introduction, but I'll pass the mic to him again if you'd like it. I'll give him a second here if he wants. Uh, just um, as introduced, I'm Troy Fleming. I'm the city manager and and um, the city manager is the lone employee of council. So for those of you that are successful being on the next council, we would end up working closely together. Thanks. Thanks, Troy. Uh, Tucker Christensen. Uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm Tucker. I've lived in Fort Saskatchewan. Well, this is actually the third time I've lived in Fort Saskatchewan, but uh, I'm uh, 23, so I think it's uh, important to have some uh, youth on the council just to bring in a new perspective and talk about the challenges that we face. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And then I have a final user here called VPA. Sorry, I don't know how to address you. I'll give them a second here to unmute if they'd like. Oh, there we go. I think here I am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ruel Thomas, uh, and I'm actually uh, the new management consultant for the Victim uh, Volunteer uh, Volunteer Programs Association. Um, and so I'm new to the community, and actually not don't reside in Fort Saskatchewan. But I wanted to to, to connect with these individuals and just to hear a little bit more about uh, this particular process, and also to get a first introduction. To uh, to the uh, the candidates um, new and new new and old um, who are looking to to run and represent the community. So um, as in my role, I'll be looking at uh, 
how the volunteer, uh, volunteer Program Association uh, can connect more with the city and, and work alongside these individuals. So um, all the best to you. I'm a, uh, I'm a Laclabish, a former Laclabish resident. Don't hold that against me. Um, I uh, ran uh, a few years ago, um, and so I appreciate all the effort and the, uh, and the dedication for these individuals because uh, what you're signing up for, what you have signed up for, uh, A, is really critical, and, and B, um, is, uh, is really important. Sometimes thankless work, so uh, be prepared for that, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Troy can tell you all about that work. So uh, thank you all, and good luck. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'll pass it back to Brenda here. Um, Andrew, did we lose Scott? Was he? I know he left. Did he come back? Um, I don't have anyone in the lobby, and yeah, you're right. Scott is not on my list anymore. So hopefully okay. he can reconnect. He may. He may reconnect. So today's, uh, if you can't tell already, today's uh, session is meant to be informal, and informative, and interactive. So as we work through the slides. Feel free to ask questions and uh, provide insight along the way. That would be great. Now I'll hand this back to Andrew. <laughs> sure, yeah, thanks. Um, we did a little bit of technical uh, instruction before in the lobby, but there are some people who joined a little bit later. So um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you may have noticed in the top right of the corner or top right corner of your WebEx application, the session is being recorded and it's going to be uploaded to YouTube once we're done, as Brenda noted. Uh, this is for the benefit of those who expressed interest in the session but weren't able to attend and for you joining us now in case you want to reference this material we talk about today later on. And also, as Brenda noted, this session is meant to be interactive and we welcome questions. Uh, but in order to ensure all participants can speak and hear in this virtual setting that we're using, I would ask that when you're not actively speaking, please be sure to mute your microphone. Uh, this greatly reduces any audio interference and will help the session run more smoothly. Um, along the bottom of your WebEx application, you'll see the standard controls that come with video conferencing software and may also see a reactions button. I know it differs depending on what device you're joining from, but uh, hopefully you see that little button with a smiley face on it. If you click on that, you should see a raise hand function at the top. Feel free to use that if you have a question um, because that will help us keep track of uh, how many questions we have and we can address them in order. Um, and you can use the chat function on the bottom as well. You can feel free to throw a question in there and we'll do our best to answer it in order as well. And the last thing for me on the technical side would be that if you're experiencing connection issues, it sometimes helps to turn off your video camera. As much as we want to see everyone's smiling face, if you're finding your connection is quite slow, it may be worth trying to participate with your video off. Okay, so I'll get the slideshow going here. So today's agenda, so today's session will be broken down into general topics, the first of which being the election. There are, a number, uh, there are a number of subjects that we will touch on, including election information, legislative requirements, some specific documents that are important to reference, campaigning, results, and what to expect post-election. In addition, we're gonna discuss the basic roles for a municipal council as a whole and the mayor and councilors within their specific roles as well as time commitment, some challenges, and some of the solutions that you might experience over the term. And I will pass it off to you again, Brenda. Okay, so next we'll talk about the election, election information. So election day is October 18th, and voting stations will be open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now, there was a change in um, 2000 for the 2021 election that were open one hour earlier than legislative required. So normally we'd be open at 10, but we are opening at nine to give an extra hour of voting capabilities. The three voting stations are set for the Dow Centennial Center in the gymnasium, the um, Port Saskatchewan Community Hall, in the Normandy Room and Wynn Ferguson School in the gymnasium. 
we have increased the number of advanced voting dates from two to five. Of those dates, two of them are um, scheduled to be held as drive-through voting. The drive-through voting will be weather dependent. So if we uh, find ourselves in the unfortunate situation of a blizzard, we will move inside to the DCC. So that is uh, plan B. Institutional voting will be held for residents of Rivercrest, uh, the Rivercrest Lodge Nursing Home and Dr. Turner Lodge on October 14th and 15th. Those, uh, the voting will be held for a two to three hour period um, when those residents uh, have finished voting, we're done out of there. Um, residents also have the ability to request special ballots. If they are absent from the jurisdiction, if they have a physical disability, or will be working in an election outside the municipality where they live. It should be noted that the returning officer doesn't have the authority to decide whether or not somebody meets this criteria. So that is a, a lot of discussion that we've had um, in the region. Um, the Local Authorities Election to Act is very specific on that criteria. However, with COVID and those restrictions, um, you know, they haven't expanded the act to include that as a COVID. Um, so basically um, the people who are requesting a special ballot, they're filling out an oath saying that they meet that criteria. So if they feel that they um, do not want to leave the house because of COVID, then that is up to them to say that perhaps they consider themselves as having a physical disability in that instance. That's just a, a question that we tend to get asked a lot. So results, um, our goal is to have the election results available to you as soon as possible. However, this could take two to three hours following the close of the voting stations. Uh, follow the, following the final tabulation, candidates will be advised by email and we will post the results on the city's website. We will be having an increased number of tabulators for this election. So we will be increasing from one tabulator per voting station to two. That should help with some efficiency and it will also help because we will, we will likely have a provincial referendum question or questions on the ballot. The uh, federal Senate election will be held and possibly school trustee uh, ballots. So it's going to be a fairly busy election. The results will remain uh, unofficial until Friday at noon. I'll hand it over to Andrew. Yeah, thanks Brenda. So in terms of legislative requirements, um, one thing is due to a change in the Local Authorities Election Act, candidates have been able to submit nomination papers since January 1st of this year. Nomination day, which is now considered the cutoff as opposed to the time in which you can submit, is until noon on September 20th. Any candidates who wish to run in the 2021 election must submit nomination papers prior to noon on September 20th. Um, as information, the candidate's nomination package is posted on the city website. This package includes a number of important documents. However, one to, pay, excuse me, one to pay special attention to is Form 4, which is the nomination paper and candidate's acceptance. Um, there are a number of legislative requirements that candidates must follow, so it's necessary to review the contents of the Local Authorities Election Act thoroughly. Uh, another important legislative requirement, if there weren't enough, um, following the election, whether elected or not, all candidates must complete and submit a candidate disclosure and financial statement, which is election form 26. This must be submitted to the city prior to March 1st of 2022. At a city level, the elections bylaw was recently revised and adopted by council in preparation for the upcoming election. The bylaw provides the returning officer with the necessary approvals for all election processes uh, and ensures alignment with provincial legislation, as well as includes information on the processes that are in place for conducting the election. 
Another important municipal bylaw is the election signage bylaw. So this bylaw regulates election signs, if you can guess, and their placement on public property. So according to this bylaw, election signs can be placed on public property following the close of nomination day, which is September 20th. Should signs not conform to the regulations in the bylaw, the city's municipal enforcement services have the authority within the bylaw to remove the signs, and there are financial penalties to be aware of. And back to you, Brenda. So we'll talk about campaigns. As the city conducts the municipal election, administration does not become involved in or support individual campaigns. It is our responsibility to ensure that the election processes are carried out in a fair, accurate and transparent manner. To assist with that, once candidates have submitted their nomination papers, we aim to share questions asked by one candidate with all, of all candidates when it is mutually beneficial. Additionally, questions and information that we we'll believe will be um, valuable to all candidates will be posted on our website. That is something that we have started this year and it will continue to build as we get more information and questions from candidates. This poli uh, sorry, the election campaign provision policy. This policy provides guidelines for administration, current council members, potential members, and the public on the expectations for campaigning and the election processes. So as an example, um, I'm sure you'll be looking at the policy, but an example would be uh, existing council members who plan to run in a future election cannot use their role as a council member to further their election campaign. Um, there are a number of provisions that are specific to what is and what is not permitted, just so that we ensure there is a level playing field be between all candidates. So after you're elected, what happens? Following the election, there is a whirlwind of activity for the newly elected officials, such as right from the get go, the week following the election, we will be scheduling one on one interviews between each candidate and members of the legislative services team. In that in that meeting, you will go over things uh, such as reviewing paperwork policies. Um, we will provide you with the ne necessary equipment that you need to carry out your role, the technical equipment. We'll discuss um, boards and committees and the appointments that you will be you will be uh, having and just the general information questions that you might have um, to help you get started in that first week. It's going to be, uh, there's gonna be a lot to learn. Um, then we move into the council orientation, which is gonna be discussed on the next slide. So the orientation will be held for four days and uh, that will be Monday, October 25th, Tuesday, October 26th, then again, Monday, October 1st, and Tuesday, October 2nd. Those will be full days. And uh, the orientation will have a significant focus on providing members with the additional information that you need to get yourselves going, team building, and also it provides a really great opportunity to get to know each other. As you will, be, you will be provided with a significant amount of information in those four days, we will schedule a number of follow-up educational sessions to cover topics that we were not able to fit in during that orientation period. So looking at the upcoming schedule, there are a number of activities remaining in the very short months <laughs> that remain of 2021. So we have the one-on-one -on -one meetings and the orientation, which we just discussed. The council swearing-in ceremony will be held on Tuesday, October 26th, just before the organizational and council meeting. Now, depending on COVID restrictions at the time, um, it is not yet known whether that will be uh, held in person or virtually. We're hoping that it will be in person, but we're just, trying to uh, 
be sure we're ready either way. Um, if permitted, we will have the swearing in a swearing in social ceremony or, or just a gathering after the um, council meeting. And then then we move to budget. So mid um, mid November, we have five full days of budget deliberations um, scheduled. Depending on how quickly we get through uh, budget deliberations, it may not need all of that time. But at this point, that is what is scheduled. Uh, there will likely be other external uh, training opportunities, presentations uh, by other municipalities. This typically happens following an election. So when we become aware of those opportunities, we will pass that information along to council members. And um, for those who are interested, can attend. Some of the uh, subject matters that have been covered in the past include governance, um, understanding the role of uh, a council member, uh, that council member administration role, and uh, so things like planning and development. Um, so, so those are just some of the uh, external presentations that we have uh, participated in the past. The Alberta Urban Municipalities Association holds an annual convention, and it tends to uh, move between Edmonton and Calgary. This year's uh, convention will be November 17th to 19th, and it will be held in Edmonton. Finally, we have the regular council and committee of the whole meetings. Council meetings are held on the second and fourth Tuesday evening of each month. Council meetings are where um, council deliberates and approves uh, decisions to guide the uh, administration on how to carry out those functions. Committee of the whole meetings are held on the third Tuesday of the month. And those meetings are typically um, where members will be presented with uh, administrative pre presentations on upcoming matters, upcoming bylaws, policies. It gives a, a great opportunity for some informal discussion and where administration can get feedback knowing that those documents will be coming in front of council eventually for approval. It should be known that at the committee of the whole meetings, no business decisions can be made. So council meetings, that is the forum where those um, approvals are made or business decisions. And I think that's it for upcoming schedule. Okay, so next I'm going to run through some of the basics of Municipal Council. Uh, so this section hopefully will provide some information on Council's role uh, as it's detailed in the Municipal Government Act. And hopefully I can liven up the MGA content. If you have trouble sleeping, just pick up the Municipal Government Act pro tip for those who haven't uh, been in Council yet. Um, but once elected, members uh, are in for a term of four years. And within those four years, there are duties to uphold as detailed by Section 153 of the MGA. In a nutshell, these are to maintain good governance and consider the welfare and interests of the community, to develop and promote a vision and mission for the city, to make decisions on bylaws and policies, as Council will be presented with a number of them, uh, with a wide range of topics. In addition to those fundamental responsibilities, the city manager is the only employee of council, as Troy noted earlier. Therefore, it is council's role to appoint and evaluate the person in that position. Uh, and as Brenda mentioned, council makes decisions in open session at regular council meetings. Many of those decisions will relate to the development and evaluation of Council's policies and programs and the city's policies and programs. Conducting business and making decisions must align with legislation. The most commonly referenced legislation includes the Municipal Government Act, the Local Authorities Election Act, and the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Council must stay up to date on operations and administration of the municipality, and that information can be requested of administration. 
And finally, for this presentation, not finally among all your responsibilities, but uh, it is council's role to adopt municipal budgets on an annual basis. So getting down to position specific, uh, the role of the mayor. In Fort Saskatchewan, the mayor's position is considered to be full time and has a dedicated office on the third floor of City Hall. The mayor is one of seven members of council and has the same powers, responsibilities, and voting rights as the other six members. The mayor acts as the chair in council meetings and is the primary representative or spokesperson on behalf of council at events. Additionally, the mayor is often required to represent the city by interacting with other levels of government, regional groups, and municipalities. The mayor is a member of all council committees as permitted by the Municipal Government Act. And in the event the mayor is unable, excuse me, unable to carry out their duties, the current deputy mayor would act in the capacity of mayor. And the deputy mayor is uh, each member of council. And so they serve as the deputy for a rotating three month period. So during your four year term, a council member would act as deputy twice. In terms of councillors, the city's councillors are considered part time. And as the city does not have a ward system, as other municipalities do, when members are elected, they represent the entire community, not just a select portion. As a member of council, you help to set the strategic direction for the municipality assist with the development of policies, and provide direction to the city manager. A requirement of the role of counselor is to actively participate in meetings and engage with colleagues and the public. Once elected, you are required to keep confidences, meaning that you will regularly be provided with information that must be kept confidential. A few examples of confidential matters include personnel details, legal and intergovernmental matters, and negotiations. And now I'm going to pass it back to Brenda here. Okay. So looking at the time commitment, this is a question that we get asked a lot. How much time do you need to commit to this role? As previously, as previously stated, members attend two council meetings and one committee of the whole meeting each month. Uh, council uh, public sessions are currently scheduled to start at 6 p.m. on the Tuesday night. If needed, a closed session or an in-camera session uh, would be scheduled for 5 p.m. Committee whole of the whole meetings start at 5 p.m. And if a closed session is required, it's typically held at the end of the meeting. Due to the number of items on the agendas, we can we may frequently uh, see meetings that may need to start at a, an earlier time. So uh, lately, we've been having to start meetings at either two or three o'clock, depending on the number of items on the agenda. So you'll need to set aside an adequate number uh, an adequate amount of time to prepare for those meetings. Um, that includes reading the material for the agendas, um, preparing questions and comments that can be ready for presentation at the meeting. Additional time is also required for any board or committee or commission appointments that you might have. You know, there's also public appearances, um, public engagement, and there are any number of questions that you could get from members of the public. So that can be very time consuming. Um, ultimately, it's up to each individual member. How much time do you have to dedicate to this role? So looking at some of the common challenges that exist on council as being a member of council or council as a whole. Some of the more common challenges, um, not being clear on the roles of council, the mayor, counselors and administration when there is a lack of strategic direction for council when members act on their own using their own opinions rather than those 
um, that have been approved uh, by council as a whole. And when individual members direct administration, members of the administration, so as mentioned, um, the city manager is the only employee for council. So those questions should filter through the city manager and then they will filter through to administration as necessary. So looking at some solutions that we might need, that would be the next slide. Please. Um, some of the recommended solutions include treating other members of council and administration with respect, only making decisions based on approved bylaws and policies, making decisions through resolution or bylaw. That is how council, when I mentioned before, making decisions, it's through either a resolution or bylaw. Providing council with the relevant and detailed, a de relevant and detailed orientation. So following that, members may take it upon themselves to do further training in that four year period, whether that's internal education sessions or external. Um, I understand uh, Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, they have quite a few educational opportunities um, as well as external opportunities, as I mentioned. The key for success uh, for members of council is to remain respectful, even when there are differing opinions and um, knowing that you will be working for the betterment of the community. That is your ultimate goal. So I think that is the end of our formal presentation. We would love to hear some dialogue or questions and hopefully we can answer them for you. Can I ask a couple questions? Absolutely. Okay, so um, the first one is you didn't talk about the code of conduct. And the other thing that I missed on the last slide was that council can only direct uh, or give direction to um, to the city manager as a council of the whole. Because sometimes some councillors, I think, probably think, you know, as they come in, they can give direction uh, on their own, but it's about who can and, and how it's done. So if you can cover those two areas. Please, I can, you. I can, I can certainly talk to those areas, and I'm guessing that uh, Troy may be able to expand on the second question beyond what what I can. Um, yes, recently uh, there was a change to the Municipal Government Act, which require municipalities to adopt a code of conduct. So that has been done. Uh, this this past council has done that, and it is a, an existing current existing bylaw. And um, it really um, outlines how you want to act as a council. It, uh, it, is, a, it is another um, valuable bylaw and it is one that should, um, will be in front of the new council shortly after um, they are elected. So that is one that we can, um, we can include on, our, on the website as well. It, it is already there, but we can include that with our election information. Now, with respect to having discussions with the city manager or directing the city manager, you're correct there that uh, the city manager takes direction from council as a whole, not from individual members. Now, that does not preclude um, individual members from speaking to him. As, as Troy said, he is your employee, and so there will be discussions. So, Troy, I don't know if you want to expand on that, just the, the nature of your relationship. Uh, no, Brenda, I thought you did a pretty good job. Essentially, the um, um, there is an, a lot of authority and responsibility that's delegated to council, but it's important to note that that authority exists with council as a body, as a decision-making body. And so your um, your authority as a member of council, um, it is relatively limited in that sense, and that council makes decisions by resolution, and and it's those decisions that more or less direct the city manager 
um, and and sort of that's where the direction flows from council to staff um, and now things get done. So um, we do and we spent a lot of time this term working on um, clarifying our communication protocols and things. So um, we do have some rules in place and you can actually see them in the council code of conduct bylaw. It's it's an appendix um, at the back of that bylaw on the city's website. And it, it gives you a sense for um, if you do want information from administration, how do you go about doing that? What information gets shared with all members of council? Um, things like that. So there is a bit of a process to it and it's something we would talk a lot about in orientation so that everyone is clear on it. Excellent, thanks Troy. Are there any other questions that we'd love to hear? Yeah, hi, I just tried the raising hand emoji. I was just uh, going to ask in terms of uh, signage bylaw for private property, does that exist? Or, because you did mention public property, maybe it's something I skipped over in the nation package. Just in terms of no opening date, I guess, is what I'm asking. Right, right. Um, Andrew, uh, you may be more familiar from the private um, property aspect, but the election uh, signage bylaw does not cover the um, a private property at all. That would be under our land use bylaw. Okay. Um, Andrew, is there anything there that you can speak to? Yeah, that's exactly right. So signage on residential properties or private properties is addressed by our city's land use bylaw. So there you'll have the number of signs permitted on certain property types as well as sizes. So it's really important you look into what uh, area you're looking to set up signage and you can always check with our subject matter experts on that, which is our planning and development department. Um, they know the land use bylaw backwards and forwards. Or if you direct questions to us, we can definitely look into it for you. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, I'm glad to uh, hear about the uh, code of conduct. Um, uh, that's something that um, I'm uh, I, I've been looking for for a while, coming forth from uh, from council. Um, as I think, so, not so much within the council parameter inside but i think outside during elections it's been uh uh a little less than desirable um and i like the idea of the level playing field as well makes it a little easier for um, everyone to um engage properly and not think that uh, uh someone who may be on council uh and i'm not talking about current council but uh in councils gone by where the, the position has been used to uh, further, uh, their, um, uh, their ability to uh, run in a in a follow up um, election. So I, I'm very happy to hear uh, hear these things, uh, and knowing that I can ask uh, questions going forward as well. But uh, as they crop up, um, uh, Brenda, I think you you guys have been uh, wonderful with uh, putting the package together and and uh, getting this information out. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this year's election. Thank you, Stuart, for those comments. Um, yeah, I, we, it, ensuring that um, we have that level playing field is very, very important to us. Um, and so we are very mindful of, of those, um, those requirements. We're to, to help with that, it was the, the questions and making sure that everybody uh, is aware and should you get on council, you'll find that that's the same, how the, the same thing that uh, works. If somebody, one of the council members asks a question, it's filtered through to the other so that everybody has the same information. So it's really using that same concept, um, especially after, right now it's a little difficult as, as nomination papers are trickling in, um, but once the close of nomination day occurs and we know what candidates are running um i will likely have a a distribution whether depending on the amount of questions coming in whether that's a couple times a week or and it will just be um a summary of those questions and as i said some of the more common ones can also be put on the website but uh, that's that's what we're going to be looking at doing
Brenda, can I just maybe follow up on the time commitment piece? Because that is um, absolutely the number one question that people ask all the time. Um, and just maybe even give an example of last night where our council meeting started at two, um, where that normally starts um, at, at five. And so just to give people maybe a, a, big, a better picture of what the time commitment is, there are some, some daytime commitments and also um, depending on which boards and committees uh, you choose, those could also be daytime commitments as well. Um, like Brian and I sit on Heartland Housing, for instance, and our meetings are one to four in the afternoon um, on the last Wednesday of the month. So, uh, yeah, just to give a little bit more information on on time. Yeah, that that is definitely a common question. And for example, as you mentioned, last night's council meeting, had we started at our normal time, we would have, I think, finished up about quarter to eleven. It's um, it's it's it can be pretty late when when there's a lot on the agenda. So it is great to have that flexibility to be able to start earlier when those agendas warrant it. Um, and uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, with the boards and committees, we are going to be spending more time on. Um, what do they look like? What uh, just so that even when you're just even before we've started the orientation and you meet with uh, legislative services staff, we will give you an over overview of those boards and committees and we'll ask you to start thinking about what what are you interested in? Which ones do you think you might want to participate? What type of time commitment do you have to be able to, to commit to those particular organizations? Um, there is a quite a detailed process for the appointments and it's going to be fairly quick in the election year. It's going to be a fairly quick process, but uh, I believe there's going to be also be some time spent on boards and committees during the orientation. So we want to make sure that Council members are have a really good understanding of um, of what that particular organization is about and what the expectation is for for time commitment. So, is there anyone else who has a follow up question or new question or just wants to make a comment? Actually, that was the question that I had. Um, if you um, aren't really, you know, uh, familiar with, let's say, roads and infrastructure and that sort of thing, you would go on a committee that that would, I mean, you would chime in on those sorts of uh, voting things. But obviously, um, I guess I was wondering, you would pick a committee that really um, sort of adapted to your interests and maybe your expertise? Um, I'll, I'll speak to that, but I'll ask anybody else to jump in as well. Um, I think initially you're probably going to be drawn to something that speaks to you and that you have the time for. As far as those, those other areas that you're not familiar with, um, there will be, as far as ca your council role goes, when items come in front of council and maybe you're not familiar with roads, it will be administration's responsibility to prepare enough the, the report so that you have the information that you need to make an informed decision. That's kind of a, a separate uh, a separate item. But yes, I think as far as the boards and committees, that's likely where you would start with unless you really wanted to go outside your comfort zone. But I would gladly leave it up to somebody else to to, to speak to that as well. If I can jump in on that one, so it might be worthwhile um, to look at what the boards and committees that are available. So, I mean, um, there's the intermunicipal relations, which is intergovernmental, uh, the Alberta's Industrial Heartland, the Capital Region Water Commission, the Capital Region Wastewater Commission, Heartland Housing, uh, Capital Region Waste Commission. Um, the rest of council can jump in uh, on some of the other ones that you're on. There's CRAS, which is the Capital Region Assessment Commission. There's the Library Board. So really the, the boards and committees that we sit on are fairly high level and they don't fall down into the operating component. 
Now, many years ago, council used to do that, but it felt it was um, bridging over into uh, operational and that's not where we sit at. We sit much higher level. So anything that Troy's responsible for, we're not part of that, that's his role. And so we're at the higher level one. So those are a few of the ones that um, that council sit on. I'm just trying to think of some of the other ones. So if Brian or Deanna or Jibs would like to jump on and, and talk about any of the ones um, that they're on, um, you know, it just gives you an indication of, of the boards and committees and, and the decision uh, level that you would be making. So Brian or Deanna or Jibs, do you wanna jump on? Yes, thanks, Gail. I think also there's the alternate position for a few of the boards, such as the Edmonton Metro Regional Board. Um, typically, the mayor represents our city, but there's also an, an alternate or a standby counselor, and, and that particular function can, can absorb quite a bit of time during a normal month. Uh, that's the one that I think it, maybe I missed it in, in, in your comments, not sure. Thank you. Yeah, that that uh, answers my question. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that uh, that's a just a, a question in the back of your mind that you've been just wondering about, and you know, just put it out there, and maybe it will start some discussion. I suspect that uh, it's been pretty, pretty, pretty quiet as far as people um, submitting nomination papers, but I suspect that's probably going to um, to speed up fairly quickly. Um, you know, September is not that far away, which is really quite frightening. But uh, yeah, we're we're going to continue to work on our processes. But I'd love to be able to help you if you can. So I, uh, I was able to pull up the actual list of uh, board and committee assignments so that I can offer that up. So Alberta's Industrial Heartland, um, Capital Region Northeast Water Services Commission. We're also on the Emergency Advisory Committee, which all of City Council is on. Uh, Fort Saskatchewan Policing Committee, um, uh, Edmonton Metropolitan, uh, Heartland Housing, uh, the assessment, uh, capital region assessment, community events grants committee, which people can choose to sit on that, the intermunicipal relations. Uh, we did have a temporary one for a period of time for the regional transit services commission. And I'm not sure how that board is going to uh, go going forward if it'll be a member of council appointed to it. I make the assumption it will be, so that would be another one. Um, Let's see, uh, Edmonton Global, um, let's see, River Valley Alliance, uh, uh, let's see, community events, uh, and the Subdivision Development and Appeal Board. So on some of those, there's one, on some of those, there's two, and some of them, there are alternates that uh, participate as well. So that, that's all of the ones that only council would be involved in. Okay. I think we, just to add on to that, Gail, I think we committed to Edmonton Salutes as well. Did we, that's coming up, right? Maybe it's not on our current organizational list, but uh, perhaps it'll be on for the coming election or post election. Yeah, I believe that was correct. I think it was for the next term of council. So, but we have that noted. Another subject, Brenda, that maybe is worth touching on is when administration anticipates we can get back to live meetings. We've been 14 months now remote and, and uh, it might be something everybody would like to hear. I can, I can speak to that. And then again, uh, if Troy has uh, something to add, I would welcome his comments. Um, we generally take our, our direction from Alberta Health Services. So um, we are 
just in a whole bit of a holding pattern until until we get the okay that it's it's all right for everybody to be indoors and uh, in close proximity to each other. We are undergoing some upgrades to our council chambers. Uh, we're hoping, not sure when that is anticipated to be completed, but when that is completed, not only will we be in a better position for uh, physically situating members, we will also have upgraded technology that will allow a hybrid approach so that people can attend a meeting in person and also virtually. So that is that will be a really welcome new um, upgrade for the council chambers. Our technology was quite quite old. So um, as far anything beyond that, Troy, is there anything that you can add? Uh, no, we're we're technically allowed to be in person as of now. Um, so the only uh, the only hang up right now is we are in the process of tearing chambers apart to do the upgrades and I, it'll take a few months. So my prediction is that this council will be virtual for the rest of the term. And we will likely start the new council out in person. Um, and and we will, of course, be flexible like this pandemic. You know, they, they keep hearing about this possible fourth wave and variants and things like. 1 thing we've learned with all this is to be flexible and not to just assume. How something's going to go, but uh, the technology upgrades, like Brenda said, will let us. Um, toggle back and forth, depending on what's safe, but my assumption is that we'll be back in person. Um, right off the get go with orientation um, in October, or November, whenever those dates are. That would be that would be great to be able to start a new term in the council chambers, have our swearing in ceremony in person. <laughs> I think I think that would be really that would be preferred than to do a virtual swearing in ceremony. <laughs> Not quite sure how that would work, so. We are learning a lot on the fly. <laughs> I have a quick question, just piggybacking on the you know COVID in person uh, dilemma right now. Uh, will legislative services through the city of Fort Saskatchewan make perhaps an announcement that a door to door campaign is you know has a green light? Um, I know that we're following the COVID guidelines released by the province right now. Uh, but there might be some some hesitancy from uh, you know, homeowners if if there is campaigning uh, door to door like that. If if the city hasn't said something yet, and and as as a side to that, um, oh, I forgot my train of thought. Yeah, maybe just touch on that for for now. If you could. That's a really good question. Um, that isn't something that we've had to deal with before, and um, I don't know that it would be difficult for us. To say, yes, this is what you can do or no, because as Troy said, it's really up to that individual homeowner how what their comfort level is. Right, so I, I would um, just follow the guidelines that the province has put out um, that are included in the nomination uh, package. And we will continue to watch for any updates or guidance from them. Uh, what they what they recommend as far as campaigning door to door. Right. Okay. Great. Thanks. It doesn't really answer your question directly, Patrick, but it's a bit of a I feel for you candidates. It's a bit of a strategic decision you're going to have to make in deciding what the public are going to be like because you are you are able to door to do, to go door to door but the decision of whether or not that will be well accepted is mm -hmm. is another thing and so you'll have to you'll have to really kind of read the tea leaves in the community and decide what your best strategy is right yeah <laughs> Good going. it may be there may be other considerations that you can use i know whether it's setting up at you know i i know that there have been some some candidates previously who've set up a booth at whether it's, I don't know, some of a business or outside of business that type of thing. So let people come to them. And that might be something that, you know, just look at different ways of, of speaking to people without actually going to their door. Mm -hmm. yeah. Time to get creative. Exactly what I was going to say. COVID is, uh, 
the mother of invention for this year, that's for sure. Um, Stuart, I see you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Uh, sorry, I, I, I guess I should have um, uh, taken it down. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I had already made my uh, my comment earlier. Thank you. Um, Brenda, we will need to follow up up with the clarity on the signage for sure, right? Um, for the on the private property, like I, I think we need to do a bit of a just to get all the candidates on the same page on that one. So we will do that. Um, or you said something in your question, like. Um, I just thought I would touch on it briefly where you talked about um, committees and subject matter area that you're not familiar with. The one thing I would just make sh make clear to all of the candidates is that like I would almost guarantee that for each of you, there's going to be some subject matter like the city municipalities in general are pretty diverse um, entities and they're quite unique. Like if you work in the private sector for many companies, they'll tend to be. I mean, they exist to provide a certain product or a certain service. Um, governments and municipalities specifically are unique because we're into many different business areas, some of which are totally unrelated to the others, right? And so every time that there's a new council and new candidates come in, there's going to be candidates that come in and they might have they might have certain expertise in some of the things that we do. And then there's other things that we do where they've maybe never had any experience or expertise and um, the one thing I would say to, for all of the candidates is not to worry about that. Um, as a candidate, your role is to come in and not to be an expert in roads or utilities or policing or or fire. Um, your job is to be is to represent the citizens and and um, the experts in those areas. They work within the administration, and it's their job to give you advice and information and. And to kind of teach you at a high level what you need to know to make decisions in those areas. So, um, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't you know be concerned with the need to be an expert in roads or to become an expert in roads. You need to make governance level decisions. You're going to need to read a lot. I don't know if we've talked about that, but when we talk about the time commitment, there's packages upon packages of reading that you have to do to become um, to get up to speed. If you believe there are areas where, it, you know, if you get elected and you believe there are areas where you need some more help, that's what administration's here for. We're we're here to help, and um, we're always available and accessible to provide information. So, I just I hope that kind of helps frame your question there a little bit differently. It does because, of course, uh, I know it'll be a steep learning curve, but it's something I'm really interested in, and I just uh, kind of wanted to know the kind of uh, help that you would have to, in areas that were maybe more difficult for you. And uh, uh, it's nice to know that there's lots of information, reading packages, and uh, and it sounds like um, that it, there's lots of teamwork too. So that that's something that really interests me. I mean, I've sat on committees at a different level, at the school level, but um, maybe not on a level um, with... Uh, Council, but, um, you know, it's very similar in a lot of ways, but I know that I obviously know there's going to be a steep le learning curve and, um, it's just nice to know that everyone's willing to, you know, work together and, uh, I'd be willing to, you know, give that a try. So. And I think too, uh, you get into something like this when you find areas and you don't have the knowledge in them. Um, what I have found personally, is it's, it's very rewarding to dive in and, and uh, get that information and it becomes very fresh and, and it's uh, a little easier to become a, a bit more passionate about the whole thing because you are coming in at a fresh, uh, uh, low, lower level of uh, uh, trying to comprehend the things that are going on. Yeah, one thing we're going to try to do a little bit differently this year, and this is for the re possible returning members of council, in addition to the possible new members of council, is that we expanded our council orientation from two days to four days um, because of feedback that we had two cycles ago, where um, we we had heard, you know, we didn't we didn't learn enough or we didn't know enough to kind of get going. 
So then we had four days where we just rammed as much information as we possibly could down council's throat. And I remember at one point, Councillor Kelly going, oh, this is way more involved than I thought it was going to be. And, and we kind of ended up realizing that what we need to do is balance it off where we're still going to have the four days, uh, but we're, we've actually taken a series of topics and, and we're going to we're going to revisit those kind of a month down the road and then two months. And so the orientation process will actually go several months, but we're going to break it up into pieces. So right off the get goes, you'll get the stuff that we think you need to know right away and to get you through that first couple council meeting. And then some of the higher order stuff, um, you might get that, you know, maybe a month or two months or three months later, um, just to help the settling process, I guess you could say. Sorry to mention by name, I should add, or I'd like to add, if you don't mind, that I think administration does a very good job on the orientation. Uh, last year, with the four days right at the very front, there was so much information at one time that, that a lot of it, in, in my opinion at least, didn't really start to make sense until you got your feet wet. So I think what you're suggesting now is that there's going to be an introduction for a day or two, and then we're going to spread it out, or you're planning on spreading it out. To perhaps make it more relevant to the to the new people um, over the next few months, and it won't be perhaps so overwhelming on right within the first month. Yeah, we're still doing the four days, but we've tried to lighten them up um, so to not be as information intense. And and you're right, the things that we think would be benefit you more after you get your feet wet, well, those get kind of pushed down the road a little bit and. And then there's a few things we've intentionally duplicated on where we'll touch on it in the four days, and then we're going to revisit it again in a couple months. So we're always trying to adapt it and, and, and get better. So hopefully this it helps this time around. So Andrew, I have my hand up. I'll hide you up for some time. Can I speak now? Yes, sorry about that. We had a bit of a dialogue going there. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, so just a few questions and probably some comments. Um, my first question is, I know um, at the last elections, um, it was sort of like an, um, I think, was it monthly or something that the paper had um, candidates kind of write articles about different subjects? I'm just thinking right now with the paper not being in town anymore, if um, administration is going to be reaching out to the paper to see there's an opportunity for that, especially considering COVID and not um, the inability to be outdoor knocking and, and conversing, conversing. I can bring that up with communications, but I would say in general, we've never, we don't get involved in the, in the campaign election process as it pertains to the media. So we can ask them what their plans are, but it's not something that we've ever been involved in before. No, I know, I, I, I know, and I, I do agree, but I'm just saying just because two things, the paper is no longer in the city, active in city and as well as COVID, and that's why I brought that up. Yep. Um, but I appreciate a follow up with communication. Um, the other thing is um, budget. I know, um, so we have um, four days orientation, then just a few weeks after we have another four days of budgets. Um, what, and those are full days, do we have dates for those? Um, Brenda, we're bringing those right away to schedule, are we not? Is that next week or later in July? Um, it, um, I thought I saw it. I, 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 we, we do have the date, um, and I think they're between like the 15th and that, that mid-November time period. Um, I know they were just confirmed. I, I thought they had been approved, but I must be wrong. If you don't have a date, um, that, that's all right. But I just wanted to bring that up. That's right after okay. the four days of orientation, there's like budgets for four days as well. So it's yeah. kind of back to back. Um, I think um, Troy already um, kind of mentioned something I was going to talk about is just the number of um, um, pages that you have to read. So an average council um, agenda is an average of 200 pages and the budget is an average of 500 pages. So that's something that's I have to get used to, you know, you get used to reading 
um, those many pages. Um, but one thing is for sure, and I think it's already been said here already, that we get a lot of support um, from administration and there's really no need for you to be the experts in anything, to be honest. We get all the supports we, we need from administration. And we also do have a team charter. I know we talked about the code of conduct, but we also have a team charter on council where we say, look, we're team players here. Um, we work as a team. I mean, we understand that we may all have different, you know, backgrounds and different ideas, all of that. But one thing is for sure, and one thing that's very important that we've really pushed um, on this council is that we work as a team. And I, I believe that's something that administration even, um, you know, we came up with this team charter that we stick by and um, and nobody can, nobody, um, nobody's like the king or the queen, you know, we, we work as a team essentially. So that's those are just the things I wanted to bring up. And, um, and this has been really um, informative. So thank you, Brenda and um, Troy and Andrew. Um, one thing I'll just follow up with your comment about the budget and um, Jibs is right. You get you get a very large binder or if you wanted electronic, it's it's a lot of material. And I believe there's going to be an educational session prior to uh, you taking your binder. So especially for a new council who hasn't done budget before, uh, you get to walk through and actually spend some time going through it. So I think that will probably um, be helpful rather than just saying, here you go, here's a 500 page binder, let's go into budget. <laughs> so I, I expect that would probably provide you with a little bit of relief. <laughs> um, Jibs, and those dates- I didn't mean to scare anybody. I'm just trying to- <laughs> supposed to scare anyone i'm just trying to tell you okay this is what it is but we do get a lot of support from administration which is excellent and so i tell you four years after i still feel like i'm drink drinking from a fire hose there's still a lot of information uh jibs we do have dates for the budget that are tentative and we have dates for orientation that are tentative and brenda i think we can send those around i noticed where i saw it was it's not until the august council meeting where we were going to actually schedule the budget dates but uh, we can send the tentative dates around now because I, I doubt they'll change at this point. But okay, in the next as... round, I'll uh, I'll get a uh, um, some information to the group, and we'll also um, post something on our website in the candidate section of the elections page, specific to uh, posting signs on private property. So if there's anything else that you can think of as, as potential candidates or as uh, current council members that you can think that would be helpful that could also be put on that uh, the website, please let us know and we will post that. We want the information to be handy um, if, uh, you know, handy for you, so. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to ask, discuss, provide comments on? If not, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, coming and enjoy, enjoy uh, <laughs> participating in this session with us. I wish we could have done it in person, but uh, this is, this gives us at least another opportunity to to try and and meet and get some information out there for for everyone. Sorry, I had a, a quick question. Um, I, I wasn't familiar uh, last election. Did legislative services organize uh, like a town hall for for candidates to like? Because I think I think I recall seeing that um, and if. If so, is legislative uh, services going to be potentially organizing a virtual town hall or two in, in, in yeah, before before this this election happens? You're you're correct that uh, there have been forums in the past. Uh, legislative services or the city does not get involved in those. Uh, we do not coordinate them. I believe they are coordinated by the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Chamber of Commerce. I, I expect that they will do, uh, they will hold one, um, I guess, depending on the, pr the provisions at the time, whether it can be in person or, or virtual, okay. but I, I would, I would be surprised if, if that wasn't going to happen, but. Okay. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for organizing this. You're welcome. So if there are no other comments, Andrew or Troy, do you have anything in closing? No, other than I'll prepare the video for posting on YouTube so you can reference it later. And I'll also in the description of that video post links to some of the documents that we talked about in this session. And I've taken notes about some of the comments with follow up and we'll obviously reach out to attendees with uh, that follow up information that we're taking away. So thank you for those questions. No, good luck. Okay, thank you, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you.